Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Today is Tuesday, May the 18th, and it's 8.49 a.m. I'm feeling much better this morning. Thank you for all your prayers. Praise the Lord. Isn't he good? He is awesome, wonderful, glorious, holy, righteous. If I keep going, I'm going to start singing. <laughs> and... Uh, yeah, I love that song. <laughs> anyway, I'm bringing you a message from Julie. Her website is called Behold I Come, or I am calling you now.blogspot.com. Okay. She starts off her website with a scripture from Revelation 22:12. Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. What works have you done, and what will Jesus bring to you? I wonder what you would think about that question. But I'll move on, because it's a little bit long, but you're... But I was told I would want to share it, so I haven't read it already. I wanted to just get in there and give it to you. Sunday, May the 16th, 2021. Yahuwah, the Father speaks, your awakening. It was received May the 14th. All right. Created, excuse me. Created in my image and chosen before the foundation of time, I knew you. Just as I knew he who would manifest and come forth from me as my son or daughter, but he writes my son, the embodiment, or rather, he said, my son, but he means all of us that love him. The embodiment and complete essence of me, he who spoke into existence all of creation, making it manifest, for he is the word. All created by me, have a choice in whom they serve. Freely I have given that choice, and freely each one chooses the outcome determined by your destiny in me. Your vessels can be used for honor or dishonor. You who choose to use them for honor are used as extensions of me as my spirit works from within you. All that I am makes our home in you who are chosen and elected and your purpose is carried out as you walk in this journey of obedience towards greater intimacy with us. Oh, Jasper, I'm sorry. You jumped right over that hamper. Aren't you a smart boy? I'm sorry it was in your way. Excuse me. Um, sent into a realm of duality where a choice must be made, your example and your response to the position in which you have been called has eternal consequences. Those of you born into this realm with a proclivity 
towards holiness and righteousness are given an opportunity in this life to display life, truth, and the way, capital W, which is my son, to those born with a proclivity towards evil. I'm going to say that means a bent. The tendency to go towards that way, proclivity. So either you have a proclivity towards holiness and righteousness, or you have the proclivity towards evil. Once born into this body, not all are able to make the choice in whom they will serve easily, as they are bound by many dark influencing forces. Let me read that again. Because some people, I being one of them, have had a hard time understanding some things. Once born into this body, the body you have, not all are able to make the choice in whom they will serve easily. Easily. They can, but it's not easy because they're born into darkness. Satanic families, witchcraft families. You get the point? As they are bound by many dark influencing forces. In my son, I gave you an example of how to live and how to walk out the, this journey he, being me, presented the only way by which any soul returns to me. Collectively, in my body, you are to do the same in that your quest for truth and eternal life with me and all that is pure holy, and righteous will lead those I place in your lives to also see my example in this realm where otherwise it would be gross darkness for them. Okay, let me read that one again. It's a long one. Collectively, my body, those who have accepted Jesus, you are to do the same in that your quest for truth and eternal life with me and all that is pure, holy, and righteous will lead those I place in your lives to also see my example in this realm where otherwise it would be gross darkness for them. So some of us are the only light that will come into the lives of those born into gross darkness. An allotted time was given to those who rebelled against my authority and my supreme being. And as that time draws to its close, the darkness intensifies. Hence, this is why those of you chosen for this time to awaken, to remember who you are and why you are here, have come here to be the last generation. You each have an assignment 
and a role to play and are a piece of a much larger puzzle that you will soon understand with much more detail and clarity. I feel so unworthy. I don't understand why I was chosen to be put in this generation. God knew all I would do, but then he knew what I would become. That's what matters. Not what we did, but what we became. I'll continue. The seed of my spirit is placed in every soul that I create. Oh my, the seed of my spirit is placed in every soul that I create and the yearning deep within to know the truth is embedded in your core being. That's why some people are so miserable. They know something's there, but they can't accept it because of the knowledge they've learned and the lies they've been told. And the churches that messed them up or the families that messed them up. You are here to wake up, to remember that you are a spiritual being in service to the only one creator. And your life is to demonstrate this in every aspect. My blueprint in your DNA carries eternal life. When you understand exactly who and what has been placed within you, come to the realization that nothing, nothing can harm you or destroy you as you are in me eternal, immortal, untouchable heirs to my kingdom, my seal, my name is in every DNA strand. He's letting us know something, people. I'd like to stand on somebody's rooftop and yell this from a megaphone. And the opposite of what destroys this. Because when I created all things, I'm, excuse me, I should have blown my nose, but anyway, I guess it's allergies. Uh, okay, his name is in every DNA strand. Because when I created all things, I knew who would choose loyalty to me and who would not along their journey. It's not that we're predestined. He didn't say, well, I'm going to make one that loves me. Bam. No. He just knew. Who was, because he knows all things. He knows the beginning from the end and the end from the beginning. He knew who was going to love him and serve him. That's the point. All right, let me continue. Where am I? All right, because when I created all things, I knew who would choose loyalty to me and who would not along their journey. I also designed a plan and made a way where otherwise there would be no way back to me for those who are in rebellion. My son demonstrated this way. He put a capital W there, or she. And his life's blood spilled and resurrected, pierced the veil, and presented the door, capital D, 
by which all who call him Savior and Messiah over their lives may be saved. He demonstrated in a fallen realm that anyone in him has eternal life and cannot be destroyed. His blood resurrected. You are made in his image, in our image. Therefore, you are his. You are mine. You are ours. And nothing can separate you from us. Your role is to imitate him in this flesh form while here. See, you don't just get born again and then live your life any old way and you're once saved, always saved. You got to live like Christ did to the very best of your ability. And when you mess up and sin, you have to repent to get back to the place where Jesus was, sinless. You have to remain sinless. How do you do that? Through repentance. Okay, let me move on. Your destiny is to wake up and follow in his leading, doing what he did, speaking what he spoke, manifesting life as he did, in a realm of existence that is governed by darkness. So if you don't know for sure what all that is, get yourself into the gospel, the gospels, the four, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Read them over and over. But I include Acts because the apostles go on into Acts. That's where you learn more about the Holy Spirit, which is so Important to know, learn, and accept into your life because it's part of the three-part trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You can't just know the Gospels and ignore the Holy Spirit. Jesus talks about the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. And people probably don't understand this. But taking the mark of the beast is the ultimate blasphemy of the Holy Spirit because you are basically turning your back to God, which includes the Holy Spirit, and saying, I don't believe you can help me not get you know what. So I'm going to take this thing it's a form of worship to believe them over him. Do you get it? All right, where was I? Your destiny is to wake up and follow in his leading, doing what he did, speaking what he spoke, manifesting life as he did, in a realm of existence that is governed by darkness. Yeah, this existence is governed by darkness. And it needs, Jesus needs all the lights that will be, stay lit with the Holy Spirit. He needs us to light our lights and not put it under a bushel. In other words, just don't hide out. Jasper, Jasper. Stop making that noise. Hey, stop making that noise. Better. Thank you. Speaking what he spoke, manifesting life as he did in a realm of existence that is governed by darkness. And unrighteous anger, I mean righteous anger, is okay. Sometimes... We get angry over sin, and we let a person know something. 
that is very evil and they need to say no to it. This battle of good and evil, holy and unholy, righteous and unrighteous, played out in carnality will soon culminate in the physical manifestation of my victory, which is already won. I will restore, renew, and have heaven on earth as I have intended it to be. That's when he comes down after the great tribulation, sets his feet on the ground, and he will destroy all the works of darkness. Satan gets put into the pit, and the the lid is put on top, and the angels chain it. I believe it's Michael gets the privilege of chaining the lid to the abyss. The false prophet, the Pope, and the Antichrist, Obama, will be thrown into the lake of fire right then. The others will go to hell, and they don't go to the lake of fire until the thousand years are over at the great white throne judgment, okay? People get that mixed up. That doesn't happen before the millennial reign. It happens after. Okay, let me get back to this. Okay, your role is to collectively work to seek and knock. Wait a minute, did I skip a sentence? I will restore, renew, and have heaven on earth as I have intended it to be. Your role is to is to collectively work. Jasper, it's okay. Someone's in the hall. Hey, it's okay, baby. It's okay. So protective. Your role is to collectively work and seek and knock with every fiber of your being, and I will answer you and reveal to you who I am and who you are in me, unifying you in my perfect design and revealing the greater plan. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Your transformation, it's okay, Jasper, I'm busy. It's all right. I don't have to look out the door. It's probably housekeeping. Okay, they clean the floors, they sweep and mop, and they dust all the furniture out there, okay, and in some of the people's rooms. They just don't come here. I don't get them. Yeah, we clean our own apartment sometimes. When I can. Okay. Let me do this. You go play with your toys, okay? Will you go play with your toys and let mommy finish? Go. Go on. Go get your raccoons. Go get your babies out of their little houses. Go on. I'm sorry about that. He's just like a toddler. He wants me to come and look out the door. He feels better after I do that. Okay, where was I? Your transformation is ongoing, both individually and collectively. As my remnant bride, this, see, the remnant and the bride are the same, which is kind of strange to me because I always think of a remnant as after you cut out, let's say when I used to sew, I'd lay out the pattern, you know, pin it down and cut out all the pieces and all the scrap material left over was called the remnant or in a fabric store, they would sell remnants like after they sold most of the roll and they might have a quarter yard left or maybe even a whole yard. But they would call that remnants, and they would be on sale real cheap. And I would always go to the remnant section first, because that's the leftovers. <laughs> but anyway, Jesus calls us the remnant bride. We're the small part of the whole. Okay. 
This is done by choosing to operate. Let me start over. Your transformation is ongoing, both individually and collectively, as my remnant bride. This is done by choosing to operate in the spiritual and not in the flesh or carnal nature in every thought, deed, and action. Each time you choose life, love, mercy, kindness, forgiveness, fruits of the Spirit, the frequency shifts within you and with everything around you. Your cells respond as they might align themselves to a higher design. That word frequency is important as it, sound, it carries sound, sound is carried by frequency. AM, FM, those are short for words, mod, something modulation. Anyway, they are frequencies. One goes, the AM only goes so high, but the FM goes way high and down. I learned it in mass communications, but it's been a long time. I don't remember it all. But anyway, Dan was doing a, a sermon on frequencies on Grafted In Team Jesus, and they have a video on it. If you go to their website, you can find it or to their channel. Just go to their channel on brighteon.com and go to Grafted In Team Jesus 222, okay? And, or maybe it's Grafted In Team Jesus. I think it, yeah, the 222. Uh, anyway, then you'll come to a list, but they're not in order. Some, for some reason on Brighteon, they put their uh, one they choose first. And then I guess the ones watched most go first. Now I have a column on BitChute. The ones mo watched most go in one column. And then the other column is the ones in order. So you have both. Anyway, just click on their channel name underneath the top video and it'll take you to their channel where you can start looking at the titles and see uh, the one, the sermon on the frequencies. Okay, I think the, the word is in the title. Anyway, uh, it's a sermon by Dan and it's not been very long, maybe a week or two. All right, um, each time you choose life, love, mercy, kindness, forgiveness, fruits of the Spirit, the frequency shifts within you and with everything around you. Your cells respond as they must align themselves to a higher design. Energy exists. It cannot be destroyed. And when you align yourself with me and my will, your very cells resonate with the great I am. And nothing can be the same around you. You are here to bring harmony back within your own soul. And then collectively to this realm in all those who are lost and struggling to find their way out of darkness those who have not yet decided for me for holiness and for righteousness This is the greatest battle of my creation, the choice between loyalties and who you will serve. Ultimately, I will reveal truth to all, but to those of you first called and awakened, your responsibility is to gather and teach and lead all those you are presented with.
until the great move I do on this earth where all will see me as I am. I have chosen for you to be a reflection of me, your creator, who is infinite and ineffable in a finite and limited realm of existence. You are to demonstrate love and life during the time frame you have been placed here on the earth. Each generation has been given its assignments as well as the keys to unlock greater and greater mysteries of my kingdom. As you draw closer and closer to the end of this age, those incarnated now have an extremely urgent and desperate role to awaken this last generation to truth incarnated now incarnated hold on a second what does incarnated mean incarnate invested with bodily nature and form Embodied in human form, personified. Okay, those in. Okay, so humans walking around now, basically. Okay. <clears throat> Where was I? Those incarnated now have an extremely urgent and desperate role to awaken this last generation to truth. As this generation will see my return. For those, ha <laughs> ha, hallelujah, for sure we know Jesus is coming back in this generation. Will see my return. For those that have left this flesh form and did not choose me, they are lost. As this was the testing ground for them. For all those who come here. Your obedience to the call on your life will save many more that could have been lost for eternity. Do you understand now how crucial this position is? And why the urgency to prepare your souls and ready your hearts? This is the end of this age. And the end of this part of my story. Have I not told you that in the end I would pour out my spirit upon all flesh? I wish no one to be lost. The great separation is here. And there are even many layers to that scripture. This is the final dividing for this age of those who call me Father from those who do not. Revelation, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding are given to all who seek in earnest and who surrender all. I am revealing greater details about your positions as you seek, and some of you now understand with greater clarity what you have been destined for in me during this time, and as you transcend into glorification in me. The power of the great I am within you cannot be underestimated. This is why my son spoke to you that you will collectively do all these things and more on the earth as you are an example of my power and authority multiplied across the earth. Greater is he that is in you than anything in this fallen realm. 
You are kings and priests of an eternal realm of glory, a kingdom that can never be shaken or destroyed. Your realization of these profound truths I am sharing with you will change you forever, will heal you from within as your very cells must respond to this truth embraced and grant you keys to even deeper and greater revelations as I draw you deeper and further into my heart where you will for eternity be maturing for my heart is ever expanding. There is no limit to the potential I have placed within you while you are here. You choose your limitations or you choose to break free from them. You were placed here to awaken, to remember. Hmm, that's interesting. We were placed here to awaken to remember hmm. and this is a long one it's almost done though I have provided all things necessary to find the path to me to complete truth ignorance will not be an excuse my people are being destroyed for lack of knowledge but for those who take this path of truth and intimacy with me, your rewards will be great. Every inner desire that I have placed in you will be fulfilled. The deepest longings of your heart will finally be answered. I am the answer to all, I'm sorry, I am the answer to all things that each soul seeks in the quest to know one's purpose and reason for being here and why there is so much suffering in this realm. The challenge is to overcome all odds sent against you in this realm and break free of the illusion of this reality continue to wake up my chosen children children keep waking up wake up and greater things than these will you know i hold you in my embrace I bless you. I have you. I am in control of all things. I am all-knowing and all-powerful. I will cause you to remember. I keep running, asking. I'm sorry. <laughs> that was an exclamation mark. It says, keep running, asking, seeking knocking i am here my loves i am here i love you eternally yahuwah your father yesterday i did one a message from the lord it was very short uh there were three of them in on one email and it talked about that god was as close as our breath and our breath comes from inside our lungs so he's he's in there many people see God is a million miles away and he said I am as close as your breath and I got like those Holy Ghost you know like ah, you know because I had been praying about it and and just anyway you watch that video from yesterday there it's messages from the Lord uh, I think I put these are great ones or something. Anyway, uh, that's the end of this message from Julie Wedby, given to Julie Wedby, and she put Genesis 1:26, Jeremiah 1:5, 1, 
that was before I formed thee in the belly I knew thee. Uh, you need to look these up. John 1, 1 through 3. I love that. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Anyway, that's a good one. Galatians 5.13. 2 Timothy 2.20-21. 20 Ephesians 3.17. 2 Timothy 1.14. John 14.23. 2 John, verse 6, Hebrews 5, unless that's chapter 6, the whole chapter. No, it's one verse. And this is love, that we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment, that as ye have heard from the beginning, ye should walk in it. Um, his commandments, that's Jesus' commandments. To love God most and love one another. Though he were a son. Um, another. Well I shouldn't do that. To love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. With all thy mind. With all thy soul. With all thy strength. The second one is like it. To love thy neighbor as thyself. That's the two commandments we have to follow. Everything else falls under them. On these two fall the laws and the, and the prophets, he said. Okay, she gives, let's see, Hebrews 5.3, Amos 5.14, Deuteronomy 30, verses 15 through 17, John 14, verse 6, Matthew 7, verses 13 through 14, like I said, I'm going to put the link in the description box. You can go to her site, read it yourself, study over it, and look at these scriptures. They're spelled out here. Uh, Matthew 7, 13 through 14. Revelation 3, 3. John 14, 26. John 8, 32, Proverbs 20, 27, Psalm 139, verse 16, Romans 10, verse 9, and all of John 17. Matthew 7, 7, 12. Galatians chapter 5, Matthew 18, 18, Joel 2, 28, 2 Peter 3, 9, Matthew 25, verse 31 to 34, John 14 through 12, I mean verse 12, 1 John 4, 4, Revelation 5.10, Daniel 2, verse 44, Daniel 2, 22, 2 Peter 1, 3, Romans 1, 18 through 20, Hosea 4, 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee. That thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. Not just you, your children. Psalm 19, 8-11, Psalm 51, verse 6, Psalm 37, verse 4. Posted by Julie, Daughter of the King, Sunday, May 16th. Wow, what a word. It was called, Yahuwah the Father Speaks, Your Awakening. I know that was long, probably lost half of you already, but that was the word given by the Father, except for when I added a little bit. I can't help it, I just, 
It just comes out. But anyway, I plead the blood of Jesus over this video and over each and every single one of us and our computers, devices, whatever you use to get on here and all of our internet connections. Dan had been praying about quitting and so have I and the Lord gave him an answer and said no I need you until the end that's the answer to our prayer I'll be on here every time I can okay bye for now I'll see you later